In 2017, Scott Dixon was hoping to pick up his second win in the famous race, but the sneaky speedway had other plans in store for him. Driver Jay Howard lost control of his Dallara and smacked the wall, breaking his suspension and leaving him as a passenger as his car veered back onto the track. The timing couldn't have been much worse, as coming flat out at 220 miles an hour was Scott Dixon. Dixon couldn't react in time to avoid Howard, and in an instant, he found himself hitting the back of Howard's car. The way this crash played out was every driver's nightmare. Dixon went airborne immediately at an outrageous angle, in what resembled a plane taking off at full speed more than a car crash. Losing all control, his car soared through the Indianapolis air for what seemed like an eternity, twisting and turning wildly. It then flipped and hit the wall in a horrific impact, almost landing directly on Dixon's head. It caused the car to split in two, and his engine and rear axle completely detached from his car. With Dixon in his cockpit and flames emerging from the back of his car, it barrel-rolled and bounced further down the track. When it stopped, only then could we see the real extent of the damage that was done. If his car had hit the wall a few inches higher, we're not so sure Dixon would have been alive to tell the tale. Driver Pietro Scarone was pushing his Renault Clio to the limits through the tight roads of North Italy during the Jolly Rally Valle d'Aosta. These narrow passes punish the smallest of mistakes hugely, and the tiniest slip-up can have massive consequences. And this driver found this out the hard way. Pietro took the left-hander with too much speed and drove straight towards the grass on the outside, causing his Clio to mount the banking and take off. Suddenly, his car was hurtling out of control towards a group of spectators who were forced to think fast. In a crazy scene, the car went airborne and straight for the spectators, as if it was intent on causing damage. After smashing into the ground, it flipped and rolled right into the middle of the crowd. Miraculously, nobody was injured in this crash, and it remains one of the luckiest moments in rallying history. This time in the NASCAR Truck Series. During the 2000 Daytona Truck Series race, Jeff Bodine's world was literally turned upside down. His truck was hit by another driver, causing an insane wreck. Unbelievably, it was thrown up and into the fencing at over 170 miles per hour. Airborne and barrel rolling multiple times, the breathtaking spectacle continued as it was ripped apart by the fencing as it flew down the track. What's going on there? Whoa! Oh, look out! We got trouble! This is gonna hurt! Uh oh, oh my. Being hit again by multiple cars in what looked more like an airplane crash than a car accident. As his truck was ripped to shreds, debris was scattered onto both the track and the fans in the grandstand, who got far closer to the action than they would have liked. Incredibly, Bodine survived the crazy wreck with only a few broken bones. This absolutely insane crash happened for the Finn Yarimatti Latvala when he was driving in Portugal in 2009. He was on the limit of the car's performance on one of the most terrifying stages imaginable, with massive falls waiting for any driver that went off the road. And that's exactly what Latvala did. In a split second, he smashed into the side of the cliff on his left-hand side, a crash which on its own would have been bad enough. But unluckily for Latvala, it shot him across the road. His car smashed through the barrier, and he went straight off the side of the mountain. His car fell a ridiculous height, tumbling down the side of the mountain and hitting off everything in its way. The car took too many hits to count and was completely destroyed. This crash was one for the ages and is every rally driver's worst nightmare. Peter Dumbreck was realizing a dream by taking part in the 1999 Le Mans 24 hours. He was piloting his Mercedes down the back straight at almost 200 miles per hour, right behind the rival Toyota, setting up a daring overtake. But nobody could have predicted what happened next. The Mercedes suddenly lifted off the ground while going through the kink, and was launched straight into the air. Dumbreck was thrown upwards, flipping out of control, and was thrown straight over the barriers. It landed so far into the forest that it couldn't be seen on the TV cameras. The commentators were left in disbelief at one of the most shocking crashes ever witnessed. Absolutely unbelievably, because to see an accident of these proportions, you just have to fear the worst the moment it happens. By the time the rescue crews got out there into the trees, and he was some yards from the track, 
this era of GT1 car became prone to taking off, and Dumbreck was lucky to survive this inaugural flight. In case you haven't noticed, Daytona sure has provided us with plenty of talking points over the years, and in 1984, NASCAR's popularity was soaring, and it was every driver's dream to compete in the biggest race of the year, the Daytona 500. So when they held two qualifying races before the 500 to determine who would get in and who would go home, drivers were giving it their all. But one driver who may have pushed it that bit too far was two-time NASCAR Busch Series champion Randy Lajoie. Lajoie suffered an absolutely horrific crash driving his number 7 car at the famous banked oval. While coming off a corner into the draft of another car, Lajoie lost control and headed down to his left at full speed, with zero chance of getting his car back on the straight and narrow. And he could hardly have picked a worse corner to lose control on, because in front of him was a low concrete wall with barely any crash protection. Bracing for an impending disaster, Lajoie's car went airborne sideways and was fired into the wall as if it was shot from a cannon, instantly breaking up on impact in a devastating blow, this time involving Alex Zanardi. This was a moment that left motorsport fans around the world in disbelief. It was something that had never happened before in a world-famous series, and it reminded everybody of the dangers of modern racing. At the Lausitz ring, Alex Zanardi had pitted and was rejoining the track on cold tires. When he accelerated, he suddenly lost control and spun up onto the track, right onto the racing line. Almost immediately, the oncoming Patrick Carpentier, who was traveling at over 200 miles per hour, smashed through Zanardi's car, unbelievably ripping the front of Zanardi's car completely off in the process, and horrifically, the lower parts of Zanardi's legs were taken with it. He was airlifted to hospital in critical condition, where doctors were forced to amputate both legs to save his life. Moving on to the 2007 Canadian Grand Prix, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve bore witness to a spectacle that was more cinematic than real. Robert Kubica, in an agonizing twist of fate, saw his car become an uncontrolled behemoth. The aftermath painted a bleak picture, a fragmented vehicle, more a testament to destruction than engineering. Kubica's survival was not just a stroke of luck, it was a miracle. At Rally Sleefen in 2021, Siler was attacking the stage while driving down a very unassuming stretch of tarmac. What he didn't see was the huge bump in the middle of the road that was about to take him for the ride of his life. While driving flat out in his Skoda, he hit the compression and his car landed awkwardly instantly launching him straight off the road at crazy speed. He flew through the ditch and went down into a dip, and his car rolled straight onto its roof in a massive impact that flipped his car over in a horrific way. It bounced a crazy height into the air, and parts of the car were ripped off as if it were a toy. The landing wasn't any smoother, as it smashed off the ground with a massive thud, leaving smoke billowing from the car. Spectators watched on in disbelief and feared the worst, thinking there was no way that a human could survive this wreck. This absolutely monster crash during the 2022 Monte Carlo Rally is something that rally drivers and co-pilots around the world see in their nightmares. Formo was piloting his Ford Puma Rally 1 down a treacherous mountain pass in cold, slippery conditions, pushing it to the absolute max. All of a sudden, he saw his life flash before his eyes, in a crash that was unlike anything ever seen before. He took a corner too fast and hit the side of the mountain, instantly flipping his car airborne and onto its side. And it couldn't have happened in a worse location, because straight ahead was a massive drop down the side of the mountain. His car was launched off the mountain and through a bunch of trees, and tumbled at crazy speed down a massive drop, flipping and rolling in the process. The crash was so hard that it tore his car into pieces. The roll cage was the only thing not destroyed once the car came to a stop at the bottom. 
Let's set the scene for the English racer, driving one of the most physical race cars ever made on the Road America track. Going through the flat-out kink at 300 km per hour. Sounds easy, right? Unfortunately for Catherine, disaster struck. A piece of her rear wing broke without warning, sending her car out of control at top speed while approaching one of the most dangerous corners on the whole IndyCar calendar. Her car made massive contact with the wall, hitting it at over 180 miles per hour. She hits it so hard, look how high the car goes, brakes, the engine and gearbox off. It flew over 10 feet into the air and was ripped apart by the fence in a crazy display of race car acrobatics. With a chassis split in two and wheels and debris flying everywhere, it tumbled down the track as fans watched on in disbelief. It was one of the scariest crashes in IndyCar history, and she was extremely lucky to be alive. Austin Dillon's harrowing crash at the Coke Zero 400 race in Daytona remains one of the biggest, scariest wrecks in NASCAR history. While driving the iconic number three car, Dillon was fighting for the win on the final lap, but disaster struck. Contact with another car sent him straight into the catch fence at close to 200 miles per hour causing a Daytona finish for the ages. The impact was seismic, with Dylan's car being ripped apart by the safety fencing, which was left completely torn open due to the violence of the crash. Debris from his car and others flew straight into the grandstands, injuring a total of 21 unlucky fans. Somehow, Dylan emerged from his car, which at this stage only consisted of his roll cage and a few panels, with only minor injuries to his tailbone and arm. Drivers and fans ultimately got lucky, as nobody was killed in this outrageously dangerous wreck. Bruce Allen and Kenny Koretsky collided during their qualifying pass, and it made for perhaps the most spectacular crash that turned everyone in the grandstand silent. Allen lost control of his car, and it swerved across the track, straight into the path of Koretsky. With nowhere to go, Koretsky drove straight into him at full speed. The impact split Allen's car in half. The cars exploded, and Allen's engine was smashed into pieces, with debris from both cars flying everywhere and flames bursting from the scene of the wild accident. Joey Hand was driving his BMW M3 flat out down the Savage Street at Mid-Ohio in 2006, battling side by side for position. Hand suddenly found himself being pushed off the track, and what happened next was shocking. He was forced onto the grass, and unluckily for him, he hit a bump that launched him into the air as if a bomb went off under his car. It landed on its nose, taking a truly horrific impact at this heart-stopping speed. It set the car spiraling into a spectacular series of barrel rolls and flips, each one more brutal than the last. Oh, no! Very big accident. Very, very big accident. Every panel of the car was battered, and it even came across the tarmac again for some more punishment before coming to rest at the other side of the track. This was truly one of the most insane incidents ever caught on camera. This time it was Oid Tanak who took off during the Monte Carlo rally, making it for one of the downright scariest rally crashes ever seen. He slightly misjudged a right-hand corner while driving flat out, and it pulled the car out of his hands, leaving him helpless with the speed he was carrying. Unfortunately for him, it was right beside a massive drop off the mountain. He went headfirst off the side and made a gigantic impact with the earth, smashing his car and sending him flying through the cold mountain air. He went straight through a bunch of trees and continued to fall for hundreds of feet as he held on inside for dear life. Through all of this, his car flipped and rolled multiple times, taking more hits than anyone could count, before coming to rest in a crumpled ball of metal at the bottom of the mountain. Dick Simon's smash at Riverside International Raceway in 1982 is the definition of insane. The only video from this crash was from a fan, and if he hadn't captured it, we would have been left without the footage of one of the most unbelievable wrecks ever. As he was driving down the straight, all was under control on what looked like a normal part of the racetrack, but out of nowhere, fate intervened, a moment that he would be remembered for forever. A crash that was so severe 
where it had fans running from the track in fear. Simon's left rear tyre suddenly suffered a puncture, giving his car a mind of its own and sending it straight into the banking on his right at full speed. As his car crashed, it violently went airborne and flipped multiple times in every way possible. It bounced off the banking, and Simon was thrown around inside the cockpit like a ragdoll. The final hit was so hard that it threw him and his car back onto the track and straight into the path of danger. With his car torn up, billowing smoke and missing more parts than it had left, it was left sitting in a crumpled ball of metal. Now, Marc Marquez is undoubtedly one of the top MotoGP riders of all time, having won six MotoGP World Championships. But along the way, he has been involved in some very sizable crashes. So let's check out one of his biggest. During the warm-up session for the Indonesian GP in 2022, he suffered one of the most spectacular and frightening crashes ever seen in the sport. While taking a series of high-speed corners flat out, he was taken by surprise when the rear end of his bike stepped out in a huge way. He was thrown so high into the air that he managed to do a full head-over-heels flip before landing awkwardly on his head and back. His head took a big hit off the ground when he landed, and his body slid along the track in a very worrying way. Tips it in. Whoa! Wow! Oh, theory, mate! Unbelievable! The rear tire just letting go in the most spectacular fashion. That is all oh, theory, me. Marquez was taken to a local hospital straight away for further checks, where it was revealed that he suffered a concussion. MotoGP medical staff declared him unfit to continue the weekend, and he was forced to sit out the race. Drivers were enjoying an exciting race on the streets of Houston, packed with fans looking for close-quarter, adrenaline-fueled racing. But some fans got more than they bargained for, as one of the most horrific crashes in IndyCar history was just moments away. As Frankiti was racing Takuma Sato on the final lap, Sato lost control, leaving Frankiti with nowhere to go but into Sato at full speed. As the pair came together, Frankiti was launched over the concrete wall, ripping both the fence and his car into pieces instantly. Debris flew wildly into the grandstand, and Frankiti's car was spun midair in a scene that left the race commentators completely speechless. His car was destroyed, and the crowd's reaction to the replay said it all. An oncoming car then hit Sato at full speed, littering the track with even more debris. And there's the marbles on the outside there. Sato oh, gets he got loose. loose. Oh! oh, no. Oh, my goodness. That is a horrifying ride for Dario Franchitti. The safety crew arrived on the scene shortly after, but it took them several minutes to extract Frankiti from the wreckage. It was a life-changing event for Frankiti, as it forced him to retire from racing due to the long-term injuries he sustained, and he never got the chance to win his record equaling fourth Indy 500. Throughout the decades of NASCAR history, very few moments are as embedded in fans' memories as much as this crash from Mike Harmon during practice for the 2002 Busch Series race at Bristol. The track is known as Thunder Valley, and on this day in 2002, Mike Harmon found out why. While traveling through Turn 2, disaster struck in a matter of seconds. He suddenly lost control, slamming hard into the wall on his right. To make matters even worse, Harmon hit the crossover gate, making for a tremendous impact. NASCAR said the gate hadn't been secured properly, so as Harmon made contact, his car split down the middle, was torn into two pieces, and instantly burst into flames. It then lifted off the ground and catapulted back onto the track, being hit by another car at top speed. This caused a massive secondary impact for Harmon, spinning his car and leaving spectators expecting the worst. Miraculously, just moments later, Harmon and climbed out of his crumpled wreck, which was made easier by the fact that the whole cockpit had been shattered and was completely exposed to the elements. Safety measures in NASCAR were tested on this day, and Harmon luckily came away with very minor injuries and went on to compete in the race later that weekend. Dubbed the Tricky Triangle, Pocono is known for its high-speed, dangerous nature, and unfortunately for the promising rookie Robert Wickens, he found out why in 2018. Coming 
Coming into turn four, Wickens was closing in on Ryan Hunter Ray for third position. He got his front wing alongside him while entering the fastest turn on the track as he lined up the high risk overtake. Wickens was caught off guard when the track suddenly got narrower, as he didn't get as much space as he wanted, and what happened next would change things forever. They made contact, and out of nowhere, they both completely lost control. Hunter Ray hit the wall hard, and Wickens followed at full speed, but he came off a lot worse. His car was catapulted up into the wall, taking a horrific smash in the process. But that wasn't it. His car was flung into the fence and was spun violently, ripping the fence and his car to pieces. Oh, that's Robert Wickens! And his teammate is into him as well, James Hinchcliffe. That was ugly. That was frightening. Big, big impact. In 2003, he had a crash in Texas that was so devastating that it officially became the biggest crash ever survived by a human being. The Texas Motor Speedway produces racing at over 220 miles per hour, featuring exhilarating side-by-side -side racing and daring passes. But as Brack was racing another car, he clipped its rear wheel and the unthinkable happened. Out of nowhere, he was sent headfirst towards the wall and was met with an earth-shattering impact on the fence. It spun his car in a terrifying fashion and tore off every single piece of bodywork possible. Brack was left as a passenger in the only remaining piece of his car as it bounced, rolled, and spun back onto the track, right into the path of a pack of cars driving at top speed. Major, major incident. Kenny Breck getting way high up into the fence. The crash registered an incredible 241 Gs. Somehow he escaped death and was left with multiple broken bones in this crash for the ages. Miller was pushing hard to improve his lap times before qualifying, when suddenly he was taken for the ride of his life. While he was approaching a corner at over 160 miles per hour, the front wheel on his bike became his arch enemy, throwing his bike off balance and tossing him completely off the track. Before he knew what was happening, he was traveling flat out towards the wall with no control over his bike. Oh, oh dear it. Oh my oh. god. Wow. Oh my golly. Jack Miller. Wow. Oh, lucky, lucky boy. It made an absolutely huge impact with the wall, and he was instantly thrown off his bike, flipping multiple times in the air and making a massive impact with the ground. Miller slid across the track, straight towards the barrier, bouncing off it hard. The crash forced Miller to miss the rest of the weekend's action and remains one of the wildest moments in modern MotoGP. He darted off the line and was having a great run, but right at the very end, his luck switched. Caminito lost control of his car and was sent headfirst towards the metal Armco barrier. As soon as he hit it, his car erupted into flames and split into a million pieces, as if a bomb had gone off inside. The cockpit that Caminito was sitting in got tossed over the wall and instantly started rolling, all while traveling at over 200 miles per hour. His Blue Thunder Nitro Funny Car crashes head on into the guard wall. He took a nasty series of hits off the ground and was subjected to a horrible impact right at the end, in one of the worst drag racing crashes ever. Jim Reed didn't make it far down the strip before disaster struck. His car started to wobble and he quickly lost control, hitting the slippery grass on the side. His car was flung across the track and he started bouncing uncontrollably towards the wall on the other side. The barrier wasn't enough to keep Reed's car inside the track, and it got launched straight over it, instantly flipping over into a massive barrel roll. But the worst part came when Reed smashed into a 40-foot metal billboard sign at an unbelievable speed, instantly destroying his car. Slewed out of control and snapped a 40-centimeter thick concrete pole as it burst into flames. Flames erupted and the cockpit was torn apart from the rest of the car, sending Reed tumbling down the grass on fire. He was lucky to be alive after this utterly insane incident.
Marquez was having a brilliant race after climbing from 18th to 3rd position in an epic display of skill, but what he didn't know was that he was about to go from hero to zero. The cars out of nowhere, with 4 laps left, disaster struck. Marquez lost the rear end of his bike in a massive moment. It violently catapulted him into the air, and he smashed hard off the ground in a very scary impact. He landed heavily on his right side, and his bike skidded across the track. Marquez bounced like a ragdoll, hitting almost every part of his body imaginable, and was flung through the gravel as commentators watched on in horror. He was racing his powerful top alcohol dragster and had a very scary moment. While he was trying to put his crazy amount of horsepower down onto the track, the car broke away from him in the biggest way possible. He flew out of control straight towards the wall and smashed it head on. The car instantly bent and broke into pieces and erupted into a fireball. It rolled up the track and was shredded apart by the wall, all while Talaferro was still inside. When the car finally came to a rest, there was debris everywhere, and safety workers hurried to rescue Talaferro from the mangled metal. Memo Gidley was on the unfortunate end of some extremely bad luck in 2014 showing of the classic Daytona 24-hour race. He was driving his Corvette DP, minding his own business when he was suddenly taken by surprise in the worst way imaginable. A Ferrari GT car had lost power and was going slowly, but Memo only saw it at the last second while cutting through traffic. With nowhere to go, he rear-ended the Ferrari at incredible speed in a devastating wreck. The speed difference in the two cars was insane, and the front of his Corvette was completely destroyed. Ferrari, he stopped by the side of the road, and then along came Mimo Gidley, who was unsighted, and whammo. He had to be cut from the car and suffered a long list of injuries from this horrific prototype smash. It remains one of the most devastating crashes that the Florida favorite track has ever produced. The Circuit de la Salle has produced some of the most incredible racing moments ever, but with that comes some of the most incredible crashes as well. Alan McNish found that out the hard way in 2011 when he was overtaking slower traffic in his Audi R18 TDI LMP1 car. While coming through the Dunlop curves, he made contact with a Ferrari that sent him straight towards the barrier at crazy speed. With zero chance of saving it, his Audi skipped across the gravel and went airborne, right before smashing the tire wall at a horrible angle. It ripped the car into pieces and sent photographers and track workers running for their lives. And there we well, go. This is, the, this is a massive crash, and this is Alan McNeish and the Audi 3. Look at that. Wow. It's absolutely destroyed. complete wreck. The car was completely destroyed, but if it had hit the wall any higher up, it likely would have ended in tragedy. This was one of the most insane crashes that the French 24-hour classic ever produced. Used. Ronnie Sox was giving it his all when his car suddenly leaked oil onto the track, and then he ran over it himself. It caused him to completely lose control of his car, step out, and almost hit the wall hard. The car rolled over, and due to the massive speed he was carrying, he had the craziest sequence of barrel rolls ever seen rolling an unbelievable 13 times. To make things worse, the engine then burst into flames, and his car was completely destroyed. When Anthony Davidson stepped into endurance racing from Formula 1, he never would have imagined being in a crash as scary as this. He was driving his Toyota TS030 LMP1 car down the Mulsan Strait when he was clipped by a slower Ferrari, which made him completely lose control at over 300 kilometers per hour. His Toyota was flung into the air, flipping in the process and sending Anthony flying upside down towards the wall. It then had a nasty landing and and was flung straight into the barrier at horrific speed, resulting in an unholy smash. The Ferrari suffered the same fate, with both cars taking horrible impacts that even managed to move the tire barrier out of place. It goes to show that a tiny mistake at these speeds can have huge consequences. Driver Stevie Fast didn't think he'd be taking flight when he lined up for his run at No Mercy in 2016. But his car had other ideas. He got a great launch, but maybe it was too good, because almost instantly, his car popped a wheelie, and without a wheelie bar on these cars, it headed towards the sky. The car went completely vertical, 
twisted in the air and hit the concrete wall hard. It smashed back onto the track and skated across the strip, breaking up as it slid on its roof. Fast was never as glad to be back on the ground after this wild flight. The XF1 driver and four-time Le Mans winner Yannick Dalmas was driving his Porsche GT1 right behind a rival when disaster struck. Out of nowhere, air caught under the car and lifted it, sending it airborne and completely out of control. It flipped end over end and flew a crazy distance down the track. When it eventually landed, the rear hit the ground hard and broke the rear of the car off. It smashed it to pieces and the car erupted in flames, eventually hitting the concrete wall hard. The front and back were torn from the car in what was one of the most memorable motorsports crashes ever seen. In motorsports, there's not much worse than one car slamming into the side of another at full speed. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened between Fabrizio Barbazza and Jeremy Dale in 1995. While racing at Road Atlanta, Barbazza spun his Ferrari on a high-speed corner and was left rolling back across the track, in the worst possible place, and when Dale took the corner flat out in his Porsche, he was left with nowhere to go but straight into the side of Barbazza. With an almighty impact, Barbazza's Ferrari was sheared in half instantly, the whole front of Dale's Porsche was completely wrecked, and debris was littered everywhere, even injuring a fan. Barbatsa and Dale both suffered life-changing injuries as a result of this utterly destructive wreck. The safety car was being driven erratically in the wet, which doesn't exactly help on the safety side of things. As a result, a Porsche 911, driven by Tomohiko Sunako, hit another competitor and spun off the track, hitting the barrier. Heart. Tetsuya Ota then aquaplaned straight off the track and directly into Sunako's 911, and what happened next was almost unbelievable. The car burst into flames immediately, in a crash that looked more like a Hollywood action movie than a real-life motor race. Ota was totally engulfed in flames inside his Ferrari as it rolled back across the track, and he had to eventually be rescued by another driver as the marshals took so long to help. He suffered severe injuries, but was lucky to survive after this truly terrifying inferno. And after seeing that outrageous crash, I think it's time to wrap up this video, as it doesn't get any crazier than that. Please leave a comment and let us know which crash you thought was the worst, and tell us if you missed any. Please smash the like button and subscribe for more motorsport content. This has been Racer's Reverie. See you in the next video.